Well, my friends, it's happened. The final chunk of DLC for Breath of the Wild has been released, finally drawing the game to a close. And what an adventure it's been. Also, <laughs> <laughs> what? But more on that later. Right now, I want to take you through the game's expansion pass and tell you what I thought about it and if I think it was ultimately a good deal. And I don't just mean the Champion's Ballad, I mean the entire expansion pass. Before we get started, two notes. First, whether or not this is a spoilery review depends on your own spoiler sensitivity. I'm not going to show tons of footage from every bit of it and show you where to find everything, and there are a few cool things I won't mention, but I am going to go over what this DLC has you do and what it all earns you. So, up to you if it's okay to watch, I guess. Second, I know I still haven't put out a full review for Breath of the Wild, and that makes reviewing the DLC first a little funny. However, I do still plan on doing one. It's taking so long because it's turned into a much bigger project that will be released in many parts so that I can really sink my teeth into it and get all analytical and junk. Progress has been moving pretty slowly because it always takes a backseat to, you know, putting out enough regular content on a regular basis, but I'm hoping to really get the ball rolling in the upcoming year. Of course, you already know all this if you're one of my patrons on Patreon, where you can read behind the scenes updates on upcoming projects for as little as $1 a month, link in the description. But, you know, just, just, you know. Patreon.com slash all those stuff. Anyway, let's begin. The expansion pass starts out with the expansion pass bonus, where you get three treasure chests and they're worthless, so moving on to DLC pack one. The biggest attraction here is the Trial of the Sword. Zelda's had this type of thing before in previous games, but the difference is that those games weren't challenging. <laughs> all you had to do was load up on potions and fairies and just not get totally reckless. Breath of the Wild, though, is just a more challenging game. Combat takes more skill, more stuff can hurt you, there are more mechanics and options to keep in mind. And on top of that, this trial starts you off with nothing. No armor, no weapons, no food, not a thing. Every single thing you get has to be picked up as you go. And let me tell you, this trial is tons of fun. You've got to be so, so careful about everything you do, and after so many years of easy Zeldas, it's enormously rewarding having a challenge that engages my brain so fully and demands so much of me. And the best part is, it's split up into three parts. See, if Nintendo had required us to get through the entire thing in one go, it would have just not been fun. Uh, not for me, at least. I simply would have never had the time to do it all over and over again without dying. But each of these three sections is the perfect length. Dying and having to start over can still feel like a punch to the gut, especially considering how slow and careful you have to be, but it's never so bad that you just want to quit forever. And the prize for beating the whole thing is pretty awesome. Your master sword is always fully charged, meaning that you got a sword with 60 power that lasts a good long while and recharges after five or 10 minutes. Perfect for casual play when you just want to smash up some dudes and break some rocks without eating through your inventory. The second big feature DLC pack one brings is master mode. Now, I haven't had a chance to really explore the mode a lot, but oh man, it is rough. When it was announced, I thought it would just bump enemies up a level and put in these weird floating platform things, but even further, sneaking is harder and enemies reach charge their health. And after that, it's pretty all right though. You just kind of, what? Line along the Great Plateau. So the idea of locking a difficulty mode behind DLC was always a bit worrisome. Many would argue that that's something a game should ship with, especially considering the last several Zelda games and even remasters have come with a hero mode. The fact that master mode offers such a unique challenge does make it feel like more of a value. It's not just you take more damage and enemies have more health, the end, like I was worried would be the case. But the lack of a hard mode in the base game makes it a little tougher to swallow. A normal, you take more damage mode, akin to hero mode, should have been included, and master mode should have built on top of that. Master mode is certainly awesome if you're looking for a challenge, but having the option doesn't feel as good as it should. Next up, there are two new map features, and they're pretty useful. Hero's Path allows you to see exactly where you've been on the map, which helps you find areas you've yet to explore. Very good for finding those last few pesky shrines. And really nice for just reminiscing. It's really fun to see your little starting cursor and just, oh wow, I remember when I was back there on the Great Plateau, and I went over here, and I died a million times, and then over here. I don't know, it's just kind of fun. Then the travel medallion lets you plunk down a warp point wherever you want so you can return with great ease, the only limitation being that you can only have one warp point at a time. This is great for certain quests and for stuff like farming dragon parts. The thing is that I'm not a big fan of paying money for things that make the game more convenient to play. They don't feel like content, they're just streamlining tools and putting them behind a paywall just seems a little weird. It would be too easy to fall into the trap of making certain aspects of your game inconvenient than charging for the ability to play a little more comfortably. It's not a huge deal, and I don't think Nintendo's being malicious or anything, and of course you can't buy these things individually, 
so it's a little different, but it's something that makes me a little bit wary. DLC Pack 1 also comes with a number of new getups to wear. The best of these is the Korok Mask, which shakes and makes weird noises when you're near a Korok. This is pretty great when you've already got a large amount of them and you're hunting down the less obvious ones, and it's not so exact that it takes away the fun of finding them. Even when it's signaling that you're really close to one, it can still take a good amount of searching to track the thing down. The rest of the armor, though, is pretty disappointing. The problem is that you can get these pretty much no matter where you are in the game, so the developers didn't want to make them overpowered. But that means that if you've already done a lot of playing, as most of us had when they first got the DLC pack, this stuff ain't worth much. They offer little bonuses, but nothing you can't get with other armor you find in the game. Worst of all, you can't even upgrade these, meaning they'll always be just as worthless. Fun for playing dress up for a few minutes, but beyond that, just not functional enough. They just take up room in my inventory. A solid start to the expansion pass to be sure, but the real meat of it is in DLC pack two, the champion's ballad. And to sum it up, you put your tablet in the thing and that makes three things pop up. When you beat those things, four more things pop up and each of those things makes three more things pop up and you have to beat all the things that pop up. Okay, I guess I'll go into a little more detail than that. The Champion's Ballad starts by giving you this fork thing. It kills enemies in one hit, though it also makes it so you only take one hit to kill as well. You've got to clear out three enemy camps, then complete the three shrines that are revealed, all with this new limitation. It's a neat idea in concept, but for me it didn't play out in a very satisfying way. Having only a quarter heart made me just want to hang back and shoot everything. I very rarely used the fork because getting that close to an enemy was just too dangerous. Then the shrines themselves weren't the best, just sort of blah in the design department. When you're done, you lose the fork thing and you can never use it again, which seems pretty silly to me. We should at least have the option to use it sometimes. I mean, you took the time to design the thing, didn't you? So completing this challenge makes these four things pop up, like I said earlier, close to each of the divine beasts. Each one has three pictures on them, marking specific spots on your map, and here's where things get good. Comparing the pictures with your map and hunting down these spots is fun. And even more fun is completing the little challenges you find. Plenty of them have you going through rings and others require a little riddling based on Cass's hints. It's just a silly little hide and seek game, much like the the base game's shrine quests, but I really enjoyed doing it. Completing each of these tasks opens up a new shrine for a total of 12 new shrines, and unlike the ones on the plateau, these ones are great. There are some fun and well-built challenges here. They're all still pretty easy, but enjoyable nonetheless. After beating the three shrines in an area, you have to head to the Divine Beast and fight its boss again, though this time you're limited to the equipment the game gives you. This is great, because one of the problems with Breath of the Wild is that, to my knowledge, the bosses don't really scale. If you do a lot of exploring and powering up before you take them on, you just mop the floor with them. Again, these guys aren't hard by any means, but they take any effort at all, which is more than I could say about them the first time around. You can even go back and fight them as many times as you want, so that's even nicer. Nicerest of all, though, beating each one will substantially decrease the recharge time of your champion powers, turning you into something of a beast. Rivali's Gale after two minutes? Yes, please! You'll also be rewarded with these little cutscenes featuring each of the champions, but I'll talk more about these near the end of the review. Rebeating every blight opens up one final dungeon, and this is basically its own divine beast. It's fairly short, just one central room with four rooms coming off of it with one last challenge right at the end that I won't spoil just in case, but that I can say I very much enjoyed. In fact, I enjoyed the whole thing. All in all, I think it might have been my favorite dungeon. It had some very fun puzzles. And after you're done, you get it. This little beauty right here, the Master Cycle Zero, and it's... It's like the thing I've wanted my whole life, but I just didn't know it yet. The thing is at least as fast as a horse galloping at full speed, but of course you don't need to spur it, you just hold A. I do wish you could accelerate with a different button as holding A makes it hard to use your sword without letting off the gas, but it's not a big deal. This thing could barrel down and climb up steep hills, you can hit L to go off sweet jumps, it's got a light. <laughs> A light? It's just a blast to drive around with. It makes traversing Hyrule so much more satisfying. And yeah, you've got to fill up the fuel tank every once in a while, but it's fairly infrequent and you can just use any old thing you got lying around to fill it up. Finally, a use for all those teeth I've been stealing. I knew they'd come in handy someday. The Champion's Ballad brings in some other stuff too, but it's not nearly as exciting. Once again, we get some new gear that offers no armor protection and that you can't upgrade, so yeah. And it's a real shame too, because Phantom Ganon, oh, it's so cool but I like having defense at all, so I'll stick with the usual stuff, thanks. Really early in the game, in another playthrough, this stuff might be worth tracking down, but beyond that, eh, not really. Then you can get gear that maxes out a horse's stats and allows you to call it from wherever you are, and this is pretty baffling. First, it's another one of those things where I feel like it's a little wrong to charge for it. Not being able to call your horse unless it's really close by is what effectively makes horses in Breath of the Wild worthless. They're good for crossing great distances into uncharted territory, but when there was still map to explore, I for one barely ever did that. I took my time and constantly got sidetracked, so if I ever found myself on a horse, I left it behind in a matter of minutes. And now if I want to get somewhere fast, I just warp there. 
then okay, now you've got the best, fastest horse and you can finally have it wherever you want. But, well, not sure what they were thinking there. Horses are now completely and utterly obsolete. So final thoughts on the expansion pass as a whole? Was it worth it in the end? The answer is, I think so. I mean, really, it depends on how you enjoy the game. It's tailored to the type of person who loves playing so much that they just want anything more to do. The completionist type that will enjoy hunting down a piece of armor that they have no intention of wearing because it's just fun to get everything. And in this case, I can say that I did enjoy all the hunting. I love this game and I liked just plain old having new stuff to do. One problem though is that the best rewards, namely the Master Cycle and the Champion Power Bonuses, can only be earned once you've beaten all the Divine Beasts. Maybe in later playthroughs I can get them earlier if I hit the beasts as early as I can, but for people looking to power up the file they've been playing on since launch, those rewards don't really do much for you. There's nothing left for me to do with these new abilities because I've already done everything. So again, it depends on your own plans with the game and if you feel like you're done with it or not, or if you think you'll start up a new file sometime down the line. I'd say my biggest gripe though is that the story the Champion's Ballad introduces does not live up to my expectations or even to its own potential. Not even a little. I'll talk about it more in the full review, but I'm of the opinion that Breath of the Wild story is fairly mediocre. Worse though, the ending is but. There's nothing to it. There's no wrap up. There's no aftermath. There's nothing. It just ends. This DLC was Nintendo's opportunity to wrap up the story in a satisfying way, or even just to enhance the pre-ending story we already got, but it does none of those things. That new story Nintendo was promising on that original little graphic, or that quote, chance to learn more about the champions, we get four short cutscenes where Zelda asks each of the champions to fight for Hyrule, and there's some fun little visual thing thrown in there just for the heck of it. Some small bit of their character is revealed, but none of it's meaningful because we already know next to nothing about these characters, so who cares? It's just like, Urbosa knew Zelda's mom. Mifa is nice to kids. Great. Then at the end, you unlock one last memory with all of the champions together, but again, it doesn't accomplish anything. It's just kind of a cute little thing. Very disappointing that the DLC ultimately did nothing to bolster the game's bare bones story and that it didn't try to do anything new. How fun would it be if you got to play one of these memories? Maybe you could run around a pre-calamity Hyrule castle or go on some quest with the champions. The original story is all about telling without showing. So actually showing us some of the stuff the game only mentions would be really nice. Then one last thing, and actually, correction, this is the worst of all. DLC pack two gives you four more spirit orbs, but only four. You've got to be kidding me. What is this? We only need eight more. Ultimately, the expansion pass could have been better, especially considering it costs one third the price of the base game, yet offers substantially less content than one third of the base game but I can still say I'm glad I bought it. Like I said, this game is so special to me that I really enjoyed returning to it a few more times, and it certainly kept me busy for a while. And when I go back to give it another go with a new file, perhaps in master mode, I know I'll have a decent chunk of additional content to work through. In fact, trying to get all the neat new stuff as early as possible might be a fun challenge. Since it's not a full game, I'm not gonna give it a score, but if you're obsessed with Breath of the Wild like I am and want nothing more than to sink countless hours into it, you can't go wrong. Okay, and if you just absolutely need some sort of score attached to it, I give the Breath of the Wild expansion pass three Daruks out of Tingle Link. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's something I need to do. Who is this video brought to you in part by, you may be asking yourself? Well, I will tell you it is those guys right up there, those very beautiful people that are being displayed in text above me. I won't do my whole Patreon spiel because I already did that, but look at those guys. They're awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful people.